Hello YouTube, this is Chelsea from Stanley PKs. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue and in doing the same thing uh, that we did in the last two tutorials using C++, but now we're going to be doing those same things using Python. Uh, so let's get started. As you remember, in the last tutorial, I had two files. In this case, I also have two files. And be but before I, I start there, I want to make sure that you, just like I mentioned in the last tutorial, I want to make sure that you have these, uh, these, um, the Tesseract and Leptonica already configured, because if you don't have this configured, nothing will work. And like I said, you can get the binaries from the, your package manager depending on your Linux distribution but when you do that you have no control or very little control of what type of uh, version you're getting and as you can see here they recommend some ver the version of Leptonic and the version of Tesseract to match for the specific Ubuntu and in my case I show you how to build it from source so I show you how to do it in this video right here. I show you how to build uh, Leptonica from source right here. And I show you how to build Tesseract from source. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you can always go back here and, and, and do it. But you could always get the binaries. But you, like I said, you're not guaranteed to what you're getting. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to tell you, the code that I'm using here, uh, is this code right here. And it came from uh, Adrian Rosebrock at uh, PyImage Search. If you're doing some Python, you more likely know his site. Uh, he does great stuff. So I'm using one of his... Uh, one of his snippets here. I tweaked it to do what I wanted to do, but uh, I must give him credit. So let's continue. Um, so you can see he's importing here the Rx bars, daytime, because he's doing dealing with time. He has, he's importing JSON because there is a JSON component. Time, of course, timestamps, CV2, and OSPAT. This is me. I'm guilty for that one because I'm creating my own file path, sending the uh, the pictures to uh, to that directory right next to the one that we did in the last tutorial. And in order to follow these, you have to do the same thing we did, but in Python, just checking that to see if there is a if it's already exists or if it doesn't exist, make it. That's all that is. You can just copy and paste. You don't have to think too much about it. And if you follow along, you should be okay. Let me keep, this is the usage here. You have to use the Python command to execute the source file from Python. There's a C flag and there's a JSON component, which I will show you in a, in one second after I'm done with this. Here are the arguments to parse, loading the JSON conf file, getting the camera ready, grabbing frames, converting to from RGB to gray. Remember in OpenCV we never say RGB is actually BGR. So that's all is happening here. We're doing some filters, a Gaussian fl filter, and we keep going here, making sure that there's motion being created using thresholds. I changed his code a little bit because I didn't want those. He had these huge rectangles, thick rectangles that were affecting my uh, my detection. So where are they? So I changed it. Here they are. So I'm sorry, Adrian, but I had to change this. I had to comment this out because those triangles were affected. They were too thick and they were affecting the outcome. So I had to comment those out. 
And here I tweak his code to save to my path. And I'm using the JPEG extension. I should be using PNG actually, but that's okay. And that's it. You know, to break, just hit the Q key. This is the source file, the source Python file. So now I'm going to show you the JSON file. Uh, JSON. And here, you do this. I mean, uh, you don't have to know JSON to do this. I mean, just 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 copy and paste. But all you need to remember is that if you don't want to mess with uh, the source Python file, you can come here and change the parameters. So you can change them here and play around according to your application. You don't have to do it the way we did it. You can change every one of these parameters. You can, for example, you can change your frames per second here. You can change your resolution and so on. Okay. So that's that. And I'm going to save it. And now, let's, and now I'm ready to, to execute. But before that, I want to show you what I'm doing. So, I'm going here and here. And these are the ones the ones that I created for C in the last two videos, so you remember. But now I created this directory right here. Uh, and that's the file path that I showed you before. And let me just show it to you again. It's this one right here. So I created this directory right there just like we did with those guys so that's why i had to change his code because i wanted to to make these tutorials close as possible to the last one just using a different computer language so now we go in here and there's a bunch of stuff here so what i'm going to do i'm gonna get rid of all of that stuff and don't get confused. I'm in a different directory here. Here I'm in this directory. There's only two files. In here I'm in this directory with all of these pictures. So now you're going to see all of these pictures disappear. So I'm going to go remove. Remove all of, what are they? JPEG? JPEG. And they're gone. So now we're going to create. I will show you how to create them by going back here. And now I'm going to do a Python command to execute. Motion detector py. That's the source file. The flag. And the conf json. And let it rip. And what did I do? I did something wrong. Somehow I managed to mess this up. So let's see what I did. And there it is. So change that. Yes. Take two. Try again. And there it goes. So you can see it creates a nice image here. And it says no motion detected. It's got a nice timestamp here telling you the time. And now, like in the, I did in the last two tutorials, instead of walking around and running around with a camera on top of my head, I rather just use a flashlight to mimic motion. And you can see here that it goes from no motion detected to motion detect detected. And you can also see, every time I flash the flashlight, I trigger the algorithm to create motion and also takes a picture of the motion. Um, I, you know, it had the, in the other tutorial, I had it live. I didn't do it on this one. I should have done it so you can see it better, but, um, uh, but you get my drift. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm using 
these flashes that you see is actually me using the flashlight to mimic motion. I don't think you want to see me running around the, my house with a camera on top on my head. So I rather do this. And I just want to, I don't want to get too many pictures, but I just want to get enough. And how many? Come on, three more. How many? I have five, eight, ten. That's good. I could work with this. So I'm going to put my camera away. I'm going to hit Q so I can break. And there it goes. And now from this directory, I'm going to transfer here. These are all the images that were created. Actually, I'm wrong. These were the images that were created. And now that you have these, let me put this here. And now I'm going to do this. Get a close, some more room. And I'm going to show you the batch file here that I have. All I did, just like I did in the last tutorial, I automated the, uh, actually I can close this here. So let me just close it. And it's a batch file where I have a loop going through all the JPEGs. I'm using ImageMagix text cleaner, which it works great. These are the parameters that I'm using. The variable name creation so it doesn't stay in one loop the whole in one image the whole time changing the name of the image and just adding keep the loop going and then ending the loop i'm doing that for text cleaner and now in this one i'm doing it for tesseract i'm doing the same thing because if i don't do this batch file I, i'm gonna sit here just doing Tesseract output, Tesseract output all day long. And if you have a, a thousand images, imagine trying to do that all day long. So that's why I automated it. I'm doing this loop here to change the names, creating a video that I'm going to use for something else. Don't worry about this. That will be another tutorial. And I'm playing the video. I'm getting rid of all the images because imagine having a thousand images in your, I will run out of memory fast. So after I do this, after I get the data that I'm interested of, I get rid of all the images and you're going to see them disappear as I run it. So I'm going to go control X now, and now I'm going to run the batch file. Uh, search and then you're going to see all of these guys disappear and you're going to see where as you can see I'm creating thresholded images easier to work with using uh, text cleaner and don't worry about this warning I have to change that I forgot about it sorry and it's creating these beautiful pre-processed images that are much easier to work with than that. Those are very difficult images to work with. So what I'm doing, I'm mean, eliminating the background and just working with the foreground. And that's what I'm doing. And as you can see, Tesseract already started working and detecting and it's sending all of that information into this file right here. And from here it's being sent to this guy right here. And I'm almost done here, I think. And I think we're done. Then we're going to show you a, a quick video that's going to come up. And is it all done here? No, I have one more. And there it goes. So now it shows the video. That's me with the flashlight. And it took care of all the pictures. It got rid of all of them. Like I said, 
so he created this nice video right here for us to watch now at a slower pace lower frames per second he created this file he created this file and he created this file that were not there before so now i'm going to see i'm going to play this video so i'm gonna go test abi which is this guy right there you're gonna see it now it's just a video of me flashing the flashlight on different points to trigger the pixel intensity standard deviation changes on the image that's all it is so you saw it happen so now Let's clear this, and now we want to see how good Tesseract did. So let's check it out. And there it is. So as you can see, if you want to see the image again, so you know what it looks like. This is a very difficult image because of this blue wave here very difficult to work with that's why i'm using this image because it is very difficult some states some countries they're all nice and easy to work with this is not so as you can see it starts doing well it's getting those and as we progress down you can see that it keeps getting better and better sometimes worse but some most of the time better. I think it did better in the, there it is. So it starts getting really good right here. So he gets them all. He gets almost everything. He gets eight to seven, five to seven. Actually, it, it means place the one by the seven. But if I run, as you can see here, he got them all. Where is it? What did I do with it? It's right here. This one right here. He got it all. So he got Rhode Island, 827527, Ocean State. I mean, it's still not perfect, but as you can see, if you, I, I try to run the same algorithm, uh, not this Tesseract, but if I try to do ALPR on this image, it will fail miserably. So it, this Tesseract does very well. I tried the other one on it and it doesn't work very well at this close distance because it's not supposed to work at this close distance. So Tesseract does a lot better. And uh, as you can see, this is something that you can do to either uh, train your, your, your algorithm sometimes and you can see if it gets better with different light intensities and you can test uh, how it works and and you can see it live on on video and this is the end of this tutorial if you like this tutorial please click my the like box and subscribe to my channel and follow me on youtube uh, twitter and github and have a great day i will see you next time Thanks for watching.